اشهد ان لا اله الا الله tonight we want to attempt something that we've not done before not anywhere else in the world and not in australia for the first time we attempt it tonight we attempt to define the holy land what is the geographical limit of the holy land as located in the quran and the sunnah because we want to understand why is it that mr bush wants to attack iraq hmm? why why is it that the state of israel is so hungry to expand territorially why he has taken ibrahim alayhi salam on a journey from ur you are which is in babylon which is close to the mouth of the euphrates river where the euphrates river reaches the sea and he travels with his family to the holy land but notice the journey between the beginning of the journey over here in what is today Iraq and the end of the journey in what today is called Palestine between these two areas is a vast desert area today you can fly easily <laughs> Today you can get into your motor car and once your tank has gas you can drive over easily. Hmm? But if you were traveling with a family with you and you were using animals you would need to stop on the way so many times. You need places to sleep, you would need food to eat, you need water to drink. And so travelers would seldom, if ever, attempt to travel directly across the desert from Iraq to Palestine. What Ibrahim alayhi salam did, and the Jews themselves give us this information, is that he traveled northwest along the rivers where there was water and where there were people living and therefore food travel northwest above the desert until he came to the north of Syria south of Turkey and when he reached there then he headed south west down into Palestine in this way he was able to skirt the desert when he stopped this was the holy land and so we know that the holy land did not extend all the way to iraq to the river euphrates because he was already living there and he had to leave there and travel a long journey and cross the desert from the north the desert could not comprise the Holy Land. And so the Holy Land has to be on the western side of the desert which separates Iraq from Palestine. So we now have the geographical limits of the Holy Land on its eastern frontier. What are the geographical limit limits of the Holy Land on its western frontier? To the south is the sea. Musa alayhi salam is raised in a part of Egypt. And tonight we're going to learn which part of Egypt. And he takes Banu Israel across the sea. The river Nile is to the back. The Red Sea is to the front, and he crosses the Red Sea. This is the Red Sea. 
And then he crosses into Sinai. Not the hospital in Manhattan. No, no, the desert. And when he crosses into Sinai, then of course he goes up the mountain, Mount Sinai. The Torah is revealed and he comes down with the stone tablets. Hmm? And then there occurred the incident with the brother Harun Islam, etc. After that, while they are still in Sinai, now he says, Ya qawmid khulul arda al-muqaddasata allati katab Allahu lakum. Oh my people, come on, let us enter the Holy Land. So they're not yet in the Holy Land. <laughs> let us enter the Holy Land which Allah gave to you. And so, the east, the western limits of the Holy Land has to be Sinai. Sinai is not a part of the Holy Land. In the Torah, there's a strange thing. It says that this book was written by Musa Islam. That's what it says. But at the end of Genesis, I think Genesis, it says that Musa Islam died and he was buried in Sinai and nobody knows where his grave is. Strange if he was writing the book. If he was writing the book, how did he write this? That I died and I was buried. I was buried in Sinai and nobody knows where my grave is. <laughs> it looks it looks now very clear that there were others who were involved in writing other than a Musa al Islam who is now dead. In the in Sahih Bukhari we have the same thing repeated. That Musa al Islam when the time of death came he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for permission to enter the Holy Land, but he was not given permission. He could only see the Holy Land. So he climbed up a mountain, and from the top of that mountain, he was able to see the Holy Land. And then after that, he died without being able to enter the Holy Land. And then the Prophet Muhammad says, I know where he's buried. Yes, I know. The Jews don't know, but I know. I can see his grave now by, the, the, by the, the side of the red hill. I can see his grave. He's not seeing with these eyes, of course. He's seeing with these eyes internally. So Musa al-Islam is buried in Sinai without being able to enter into the Holy Land. And so Sinai does not constitute a part of the Holy Land. So we've now defined the eastern borders and the western borders, limiting it. To the north, we don't have, maybe tomorrow somebody might be able to bring some evidence to me, which will give us a geographical limit to the north. But at least it couldn't be north of when Ibrahim alayhi salam turned southwards to come down to the Holy Land. It has to be somewhere between the northern point of his journey and his destination when he arrived in Palestine. Somewhere in between is the northern limit. Clearly, the Sea of Galilee has to form a part of it because of the Hadith of Gog and Magog. This then would be the geographical boundaries of the Holy Land as given in the Quran. One more ayah remains, which clearly identifies the heart of the Holy Land. So around this heart you have to look for the periphery, which is the heart. Which is the heart? Which is the heart? Subhanallah. سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله باركنا حوله and so إلى آخر الآية and so where the masjid was located in Jerusalem is the heart of the Holy Land and so Jerusalem the city is the heart of the Holy Land 
And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes, instead of referring to the Holy Land, He refers to the city. The, the heart and the center of the Holy Land is Jerusalem. Now then. When we go to the Torah, we find something strange, which explains why Mr. Bush wants to attack Iraq on behalf of Israel, of course. The Torah tells us that the Holy Land extends from the river of Egypt to the river Euphrates. Why the river of Egypt? Why not the whole of Egypt? Why the river Euphrates? Why not beyond? How did they come to the conclusion that this is the Holy Land? In consequence of which, the state of Israel now declares of itself that it has a mission, a sacred mission, to expand until it encompasses this entire area. From the river of Egypt, to the river Euphrates. To understand the river of Egypt, we have to go to that time when Banu Israel went to Egypt, Yusuf alayhi salam. And they lived in Egypt for more than 400 years. However, something happened in Egypt in consequence of which they were enslaved. I would love to explain that to you, but it'll take half an hour. <laughs> I can't take half an hour on that, but if you invite me to come back to lecture on the subject Ashura, Ashura in the Quran, then you'll get that whole story. Hmm? They were enslaved in Egypt. And after enslavement in Egypt for a certain period of time, the pharaohs were using them for labor. The Egyptian army would always go out of Egypt and attack in order to get slaves. They needed a lot of slave labor for these huge projects of construction in which they were engaged. You couldn't build the pyramids with ten workmen. No. You needed a hundred thousand men working for you and pay them nothing. So you needed slaves. Hmm? And so you had a vast amount of slaves in Egypt. And Banu Israel, when they were enslaved, were also part of this labor force. And so they were dispersed all around Egypt, wherever there were construction projects. In the pyramids, so you'll have some of Banu Israel up there, but then you have Aswan and Luxor, mm -hmm. and you have the, the, the city of um, Pyramises and so on. So Banu Israel is scattered all over Egypt. But when the time came for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take them out of Egypt, and this is very good strategy. That Banu Israel, who is scattered all over Egypt, must now leave wherever they are in Egypt and head for Misr. And so Misr couldn't be the whole of Egypt. <laughs> huh? No. In fact, Misr is that part of Egypt which is located between the Red Sea and the River Nile and which is known as the Eastern Delta. It was in that area that a non-Egyptian people, a non-Egyptian people ruled at that time when Yusuf al-Islam came. They were not Egyptians, they were Hyksos. Mm -hmm. And so Misr is where Banu Israel were established by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the eastern delta 
between the River Nile and the Red Sea. And therefore they declare, since Allah ordained that they should be brought to this land, this means it is a part of the Holy Land. And so the Holy Land extends from the River of Egypt, meaning the River Nile. Well then why the River Euphrates? The answer is that after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks them to enter, when Musa al-Islam asks them to enter into the Holy Land which Allah gave to you, Allah gave to you, this there in Surah Al-Ma'idah, no, sorry, yes, Surah Al-Ma'idah, Ya qawmi dkhulul arda al-muqaddasata allati katab Allahu lakum ila akhir al-ayah. They said, we're not going into this land because there's a powerful people in the land. It's going to be a big fight. We're not fighting you and your Lord. Both of you go and fight. So Allah punished them by barring, banning the entry into the Holy Land for how long? Forty years. Forty years. After forty years in the wilderness of Sinai, then they were allowed to enter in the Holy Land and they took control of the Holy Land. And then, of course, the state of Israel was established by Nabi Dawud Islam and expanded in the time of Nabi Suleiman Islam and it became the ruling state in the world. And I've asked you to go to the Quran and look at the story of Suleiman Islam and the Queen of Sheba. And in that story, you'll see implicit there that the Israel of Suleiman Islam was the ruling state in the world. And this was the golden age. This was the golden age of the Jews. And then, after the death of Suleiman al-Islam, there was the internal conflict in which the Torah was rewritten many times. And tonight I had intended to take you through all of that material, hmm? showing you all the changes made in the Torah, which are strategically relevant to understanding the world today. Hmm? But we don't, we don't have the time for that tonight. You're going to have to go to my book, The Religion of Abraham and the State of Israel, a view from the Quran, and all of that material there is in that book, and that book is outside. After they had made all the changes in the Torah, they are now committing acts of zulm. وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ افْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ This is the greatest act of zulm to change the word of Allah with your own hands and declare it is the word of Allah. And so now they are expelled from the Holy Land, an army coming from Babylon. The army destroyed the state of Israel and destroyed the, the masjid and now they're taken into Babylon as slaves. But they lived in Babylon for almost a hundred years. And because prophets of Allah came to them, many prophets of Allah came to them while they were in Babylon. Many. During those hundred years. And because the divine promise was communicated to them while they were in Babylon. Which promise? The promise which came with the prophet Isaiah. That Allah was going to raise a prophet who would be their prophet, who would be known as Al-Masih, the Messiah. And who when he comes would rule the world from the throne of Dawood alayhi salam. The throne of Dawood alayhi salam means the state of Israel. It means Jerusalem. Who would rule the world from Jerusalem with a rule which would be eternal. Eternal meaning that there's nothing to replace it. This promise was communicated to them while they were in Babylon during that hundred years. So they interpreted that Babylon must be a part of the Holy Land. Nothing to do with Ibrahim Islam being born there, but rather to the fact that they lived for a hundred years there and prophets of Allah came to them. And so someone rewrote the Torah and put into the Torah that the Holy Land extends from the river of Egypt to the river Euphrates. That is how 
we now have this awesome moment in history when the state of Israel is about, about to wage a big war which will witness a dramatic expansion in its territory incrementally perhaps until it eventually takes control of this entire area from the river of Egypt to the river Euphrates.